All right, so today I want to do a quick video on my barrel break-in procedure. Now, I don't do much of a barrel break-in procedure. It's definitely a lot less in depth than a lot of other people do. And I'm not going to tell you that my barrel procedure is the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. And I'm not going to tell you if you have a procedure that you like that works for you, um, that you've been doing and you seem to get the results that you're happy with, that you shouldn't keep doing that. But what I am going to tell you is my opinions on barrel break-in and some things that I've picked up over the years that uh, have led me to these opinions. So first off, barrel break-in. What is barrel break-in? Um, basically, when you have a rifle chambered, um, when the reamer chambers your, or makes your actual chamber, sometimes there are slight little burrs that are left on the edge of the, the edge of the chamber going into your lands and grooves. And barrel break-in is supposed to be to smooth out those burrs um, and make sure that none of those burrs travel down the barrel um, to scratch up your barrel and start you off with you know, bad spots in your brand new barrel. So, first off, most of the, first off, if you're shooting, if you're shooting a factory, like a factory Savage barrel, a factory Remington barrel, it may very well benefit you to have a very in-depth barrel break-in procedure in my personal opinion. If you're shooting a match barrel, something from a, a reputable aftermarket, a reputable aftermarket uh, barrel manufacturer like Criterion, like Bartland, like any of the very reputable Krieger, any of the very reputable barrel manufacturers, these barrels are hand lapped. Um, they're match barrels. They're made of really good high grade steel, stainless steel. Um, Typically, they do a really good job of making sure that they're not leaving any burrs in the barrel. So to me, first barrel break-in is not a super important part of my brand new barrel. I just put the new barrel, I just swapped the barrel over here on my six Creed. So we're going to break this barrel in today. Now another thing is, years ago I read an article uh, by Gail McMillan. I don't remember what, or what magazine it is. You can actually look this up online if you Google uh, McMillan barrel break-in. Uh, it'll pop right up. Um, and Gail McMillan, who, if you guys don't know who he is, it's Gail McMillan of McMillan Stocks. Um, also, a lot of people don't realize or don't know that Gail McMillan also used to be a very well-known barrel manufacturer who has many Ventress, many F-Class, many, many competition records, or used to. I'm sure a lot of them have been broken now, but at the time, he had held many records for his barrels, or his barrels had held many records. Um, and I read an article a, long, a while back that was telling me, or was saying that he believed that barrel break-in was somewhat of a myth and that he had actually been told by some other barrel manufacturers that a lot of people push a certain type of barrel break-in because say you have a barrel that's only good for 1,200 rounds. Well, if you're talking the customer into spending 25 rounds to get that barrel broke in before they even start shooting for groups, before they even start working up a load, before they start doing anything, then right off the bat, you're taking 25 rounds off that barrel life. They're going to have to come back to you that much sooner and buy a new barrel. Um, and this is his opinion. It's also somebody whose opinion I would very much respect and stuff that he has actually heard throughout the industry. So. Because of that, and because of what I know of what the barrel break-in is supposed to do, um, my barrel break-in procedure is very simple. So I use, first off, we take some hops number nine, and I do things a little different. This, I, this is how I clean a rifle um, every time, and how I do my barrel break-in. So I take a regular jag. Now this is a copper jag that has just been worn out. This is actually, this is a six millimeter bore. This is actually a 22 caliber jag that has absolutely just been wore out. I, I take, I take a uh, pair of pliers and kind of wear it down before I do anything with it to make all the bristles stand down. All I'm wanting those bristles to do is to hold on to a patch. And there's typically enough of them there that I can take a patch, put it on here, wind it up tight, and I have a very nice jag to hold my patch in place. So I've already pulled the already pulled the bolt out. Really liking this uh, cheek riser by the way. We'll do a full review on this at some point. Lower the cheek riser. 
And before I do anything, I have not shot any rounds through this thing yet at all. Um, all I'm going to do is take some hops number nine. There's always that thing sticking in your thing of hops. I'm going to take some brand new hops number nine. Like I said, nothing has been through this barrel at all. So there should be nothing in here. But just to make sure before I shoot anything through it, I want to make sure that I'm getting any anything that's left over from the manufacturing process. Oh, heck, yeah, of course. Let's just pop that right out the end there. Now, that may surprise you. This barrel has no rounds through it whatsoever. Not, not a single round, nothing. And that's just stuff that's left in the barrel. This is a Criterion barrel, very reputable manufacturer. And that's just what's left in the barrel uh, from the manufacturing process. So we want to get that out of here. Now I'll take a couple of dry patches. This time I'll make sure my jag is nice and tight. And I just want to get that hops out of there. I want to make sure I'm starting off with a nice dry barrel here. Make sure I cover up all my bristles. I'm not trying to run any copper down this barrel or any brass. I just want to have something hold my jag or hold my patch. Okay, we'll run one more and that should get most of that hops out of there. And we can start breaking in our barrel which is a very simple procedure. Now, a lot of people will tell you don't pull a patch back through, but I'm pretty confident that when everything is covered, all it's the only thing touching is this cloth patch. I don't think it's gonna do a whole lot of damage. I've never had, to, had much uh, worry about that, so not even going to raise the cheek riser up because right now all I'm doing is I'm going to shoot how I break my barrel in is as I am sighting this thing in. So this has got a brand new barrel. It has not been zeroed. So as it's getting zeroed, I'm going to break my barrel in. That way I'm not wasting any rounds. I'm going to have to do this anyway. I'm going to have to zero this rifle. So I might as well get some use out of it. And if I can do something extra, that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna break the barrel in as I zero the rifle. I'm not shooting for groups, I'm not doing any of that. Okay, so that wasn't far off at all, about three inches. I mean, everything's the same. All I did was swap out the barrel, so it's not, not very far off. So, we shot one round, so that may have, if there is if, and this is a big if, I should, I should note, if there is any burrs or anything like that uh, hanging around the throat area, that should have started to or broke them loose. So I don't want to run another bullet through there with those burrs in my barrel. So because of that, I will take a brand new patch and run down here and maybe knock out any of these burrs if there are any. Okay, so a little tight. I don't want to pull that back through. No, that's why. So as you can see, that's one round fired through. It's quite a bit of carbon already. That's just, that just shows you how much carbon comes out in one shot.
Try to get this done before it gets completely dark out here. It's already starting to get dark. Let's uh, bring that down. Okay, so bring it back up a tenth. I think we're there on zero. So we just fired another round. Make sure our jag's good and tight. Wrap another patch around it. I try to wrap it in a clockwise fashion so that the, the rifling doesn't push it off. It seems to work all right for me. Now I'm gonna try to get right there to the end. And we're just, in case there was any more, in case that time I broke some, a, some sort of a uh, burr loose, we ran another clean patch through it. No, no solvent, no anything, just a clean patch. again it should be real close to zero do that again that was right where we wanted it so we are zeroed that was pretty quick I want to pull our bolt out huh Just in case, once again, these first the first shots out of this barrel are going to be the ones that actually have a good chance of knocking some sort of burr loose. Once it's once you've had a handful of rounds through this thing, I always pull my I always pull my rod out as as easy as possible. I'm trying to put as little stress on that. Uh, brand new barrel as possible make sure I don't put any sort of even little tiny scratches in it I want it to be as pristine as possible right next to it like right next to it really good for a green barrel looks like this thing I have no doubt this is my fourth Criterion 6 Creed barrel the exact exact same barrel so I have no doubt this thing is going to shoot just as well as the rest of them have but oh no don't fall there we go ah, that fell in a little bit of water there in the seat let's just put a brand new patch on it So that's four rounds through this barrel. And after each one, and like I said, more than likely, this isn't even necessary. But I would rather be safe than sorry. I already had to zero the rifle, and now I'm shooting a group just to make sure where it's zeroed. I'm just gonna shoot a three shot group to make sure that my barrel is shooting 
consistently to start out with. And on top of that, I'm breaking in my barrel at the same time. So these are rounds that I was going to have to fire anyway. I'm not shooting extra rounds, wasting barrel life just to break in this barrel. So here we go, last one. This is five shots. Starting to really get dark. I can't hardly see it. It's starting to get so dark. So that either went in one of those same holes. I'm assuming it did or, or just barely made a bigger hole. So there we go. Five shots through. This is the last patch I'm going to run through it here. We'll just run it out the end. Okay, so that's it. That's all I do to break in my barrels. Now, tomorrow when I, obviously when it's more daylight out, tomorrow when I go out to do the load development for this, I would bring you guys along with me, but I don't see a whole lot of reason to considering I know pretty well where my load's going to start out at. If I'm going to do a load development video, I want to do start to finish load development, something that's new, new cartridge, new bullet, new something. Um, this is all stuff that I'm really familiar with, have a really good idea of where it's going to end up. So when I do my load to start my load development tomorrow, I will do this one more time. Now, I won't do it after each shot. I will do, when I do load development, I do three shot groups. And then once I find some, find where I think I'm going to be, I do a five shot to confirm. Um, so that after that very first three shot group, I will run one more dry patch through and that's it. So there you have it. There is my load development. Nothing super in depth, nothing that's wasting rounds because I'm already doing this anyway. I was already going to have to do this anyway. I was going to have to zero the rifle. I was going to shoot a group to make sure I was uh, consistent and around where I needed to be with my powder charge so I could start load development. So all this is stuff that I was going to do anyway and we're just making the best out of it and doing a very slight barrel breaking at the same time. So I hope this is helpful. Um, like I said, if you guys have a barrel breaking procedure that you're happy with, don't stop doing it for, for my sake or because I said this works for me. But if you're looking for a very simple, uh, very effective barrel break in that uh, has some sense to it, this may be what you're looking for. So I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.